Hey everybody, Brady with Avid Max here, calling all new fly tires. Wanted to help you um, with your journey into fly tying. Had somebody come into the shop recently and tell us that they wanted to get into fly tying to save money. And we hear that quite a bit, uh, but really it's just not the case. It takes a long time to get to the point where you can actually pay that dividends on that. It's uh, a lot of infrastructure, a lot of uh, tools and, and everything that goes into it. And we want to help break that down for you a little bit, take a look at each component that's important from vices to tools over to materials. Always available online or uh, over the phone if you want to give us a call and talk more about it. And if this is too much for you, if you don't want to uh, get into all this technical aspect of it, we have some solutions for you there too. Starting now, we wanted to talk vices because that's your base for fly tying. Uh, yes, you can hold a hook and you can tie a fly by holding a hook, but it's difficult and it's not as pleasurable as it will be if you get the right vice for what you're trying to do. So definitely a lot of different considerations when, when looking at the different vices. There's a ton of options out there, uh, you know, starting at the entry level vice that could cost you $30 all the way up to your, your premium vice that's a couple thousand dollars. Think critically about what you're going to be using it for. One of the biggest things you can ask yourself is what size hooks am I going to tie? And just make sure that that vise is going to accommodate that type of hook. Um, for example, the Regal vices are great because they hold a wide range of hooks. Uh, but if you're going to be living in the trout world, maybe you do get something that's more specific for smaller flies. And just considering the jaws on the vise, so that's going to cater to the size of hook that you can tie it with. And manufacturers are great about giving you that information as well. There's really two different mounting styles to vices. So you have your pedestal base vise. So you have it here. This is a pedestal base, base vise. This is the TMCO vise 2. So it has a, a heavy base that the vise is mounted directly to, and that just stays fixed on your desk. Keep it from moving around as you're tying. The other option that you see we have here is your clamp style base. And so there's just a C-clamp fixed to the vise stem, and that goes right on the corner of your tying bench. There's pluses and minuses to both. If you wanna keep everything on your desk and a little bit further out, if you wanna be tucked into your desk, a pedestal vice might be better for you. If you wanna be working off of that surface a little bit, back away from that surface, and you might have like a trash can down below or something like that, then a C-clamp can be great. From there, another big consideration within your vices are the rotary function versus a fixed vice. So we have our peak fixed vice here. This is a great entry level vice. It's just a standard, it is a cam vice, but it's a fixed vice, so that's not gonna be moving on you at all. It's just a held position vice. Um, so you're gonna be hand over hand tying versus using a rotary function on a vice. And there's a couple different styles of rotary. You have a true rotary, and the true rotary basically just means that it's in plane. So your jaws are in plane with the rotary function so that as you turn it, that hook stays on perfect plane and it's not adjusting up and down as you're turning. That's key to a, um, a true rotary vise. Um, but then you also have the Regal vise that offers a rotation vise so that if you're doing some stuff that maybe you're not using the rotary to actually for tying functions, but you just need to turn and reposition your fly, that can be a great option as well. Also when considering vices, you wanna kind of think about the features that they offer. Some vices are very plain and straightforward and um, really you might not need a lot of the features in some of the vices and that's a, another good example of the peak fixed one, the Thompson A vices, that kind of thing. Nowadays, there's a lot being built into these vices though. You have a material clip, for example, on the mongoose here so that it helps hold things out of the way. Um, that's a pretty typical feature. They're done differently on different vices. On this Regal, there's a spring right here versus the spring that's adjustable on the mongoose. And then on the Renzetti, there's one that's sort of fixed in place back here. You can always buy tools afterwards that would help achieve that same function. But if you have it built in your vise, then you're, you're out ahead of the game to start. Another thing that you want to think about is how that vise is going to hold a hook and how that's going to cater to your tying process. So really two different styles there overall, uh, done differently from different manufacturers. You have your cam style. So basically this is a, a fixed set vise where you adjust the position of the thickness that you're gonna tie on, and then you're just setting that cam to hold each hook. That way from, from hook to hook, all you have to do is adjust your cam, take out your fly, put in a new hook, and you're tying again. You're not adjusting that vise every time in between hooks. Versus just the tension screw style, which is a little bit more simplistic, 
Uh, this style, you're just gonna unscrew to release the hook and then screw it back down to tension that hook back into place. So if this seems daunting, um, you know, don't fret. We can definitely help you out and find the right vise for you. Give us a call. Let us know what you're gonna be tying, what you're looking for. There's a wide range of price points here available. So you can start in and get going kind of on that entry level side if, if you're not sure how far that you're gonna take this. Um, or if you wanna just, you know, get something that's gonna last you a really long time that is more premium, that has all of those features that you can grow into we have those options as well and we can help sort of guide you and find the right vise for you. One thing you might wanna think about is protecting your workstation from your vise because you do have these heavy pedestal bases that can be somewhat damaging to your tables if you have a nice desk or table that you're working on. So there's a few different mats out there that you can get um, like this hairline mega pad. That's one of our fan favorites here at the shop. It's also great because it helps to hold materials in place, beads and hooks and all that kind of stuff aren't gonna be rolling around and off your desk. Um, don't want your pets eating your flies. So keeping all that stuff in check is great. And that fly tying mat helps cater to that very well. So now that we got the vices figured out, or at least have a good idea of how to approach looking for a vice, let's talk tools. And we're gonna focus in on five tools. So we don't wanna get too crazy. There's a lot of options out there. What are the five tools that you should be considering starting out? First thing, scissors. So I have a nice pair of Dr. Slick scissors. These are hair scissors, specific for hair. And there's a world and variety of scissors out there. You wanna make sure you get a nice sharp scissor, something that's gonna to cater to the type of tying that you're doing. If you need a longer blade, if you need a curved blade, maybe you want a serrated or a flat. And then also just what's comfortable in your hand, right? Ergonomics is very important for fly tying. You want something that's gonna be comfortable. You're gonna be using these quite a bit. Um, so definitely think about that when you're looking into scissors. Next thing that's uh, paramount for your fly tying success is your bobbin. So this is what holds your thread and helps you to apply that thread onto your hook shank. Having a bobbin is really key. Again, a lot of varieties of this out there. I think this is something that as you're tying, maybe try a few different bobbins out because you're gonna figure out what, what you enjoy tying with, what fits well in your hand, and then also just what size and style you need. Different threads, which we'll talk about later, might require different bobbins. And then there's different tube styles that you may prefer. Next tool that's very important is your whip finish tool. So this is gonna help you lock down your thread and finish your knot at the very end as a whip finish tool. You don't necessarily need this tool. You can do it by hand, uh, but this really helps facilitate it, makes it nice and clean, very smooth, very easy to tie with, to utilize, um, and ensures that that, that fly is not gonna come apart on you after you spent two minutes tying it, maybe you spent 15 minutes tying it, maybe you're tying a complicated fly that took you an hour, or if you're just learning, it's gonna take you longer to tie flies, and this is gonna ensure that that fly is not gonna fall apart on you. Next thing is a bodkin, and so this is actually a dual purpose tool. This is a shepherd hook, which is good for dubbing loops, a different, uh, more complicated tying, tying technique that you'll get into down the road. Uh, and then it's got a bodkin on it, so it's really just a needle with a nice handle to it. This one's not real sharp. There are more sharp ones out there such as this Loon bodkin. So this one has a much finer tip on it. And they're great in different for different reasons, right? Sometimes I do want a real fine one, maybe for poking an eyelet that I got some glue in that I need to clear out, um, picking out materials and things like that. And there's other times where I want it to be a little more stout, where I would be worried that I would damage that point. I might want one that's a little more stout. And then the last thing that I would recommend is some sort of hackle plier. As you're tying, you're gonna run into situations where you don't have a lot of material to grab onto. Maybe it's really slick material, hard to get a hold of. A hackle plier will help you grab onto that material, give you a little bit of leverage and a little bit of an extension to the material so that you can get a good grip on it and firmly wrap it the way that you might need to. This is a plunger style hackle plier. There's lots of different versions out there. There's rotary ones, like the one that comes in this Dr. Slick kit here. Um, and that's a great segue into the toolkits as it is. So there's a lot of base level toolkits out there that come with those five tools that we just mentioned. You get your scissors, your bobbin, your whip finish, your bodkin, and your hackle pliers. This one actually comes with a hair stacker as well, which is another tool that you might consider adding as you start to tie dry flies or if you want to stack your tails and things like that. But really just get those five tools to start out. There's a the loon version. You can kind of see the five tools that it comes with here. And it's in a nice case with that cut foam to hold everything and keep it all organized for you. So this is a great option if you're just getting going. Get a vise, get a five piece tool kit, and then start focusing on your recipes. Now we talk materials. And this is where it really gets crazy. There's so many materials out there 
Um, it's really hard to conceptualize. We at Avid Max have over 10,000 fly tying material SKUs alone, and we haven't even brought in everything that we would like to offer. There's still more stuff that we're adding every single day. So there's a lot of stuff out there to consider. Really the best recommendation I can give to you is buy based on the recipe that you're gonna tie. Think about a fly that you wanna tie, focus in on that fly and buy a recipe specific to that fly. That's a great way to go about sort of having a selection of flies, perfecting a certain pattern, and then also keeping it sort of in check so that you're not buying stuff that you won't use. There are very core components to fly tying materials. So you have hooks, right? You have to have a hook if you're gonna go out and fish the fly. And there's a world of offering of hooks out there. For me, again, it goes to the fly that I'm tying and that recipe that I might be looking at. If you wanted to simplify it a little bit from there, there's a handful of profiles um, that work great for trout fishing, for example. So you might want a dry fly, you might want a nymph hook, you might want a scud hook, you might want a streamer hook. And those can do the, the vast majority of the patterns that you're gonna tie. You can sort of adapt a lot of patterns to fit on those hooks. But if you wanna be true to the original pattern, figure out what hook that that's tied on and tie it on that same hook. Thread is another key component. Different thicknesses, different strengths, different slicknesses, if they're waxed or not waxed. Um, again, refer to the fly that you're tying, try and be true to the recipe, or find a thread that you like and help that adapt to the pattern that you're tying. Some main components of threads to think about are the different ratings of threads. It's done in two ways. It's either an aught rating, where you'll see it um, 18 aught, so 18 over zero. It's a size scale, so the largest number on that sky, size scale is gonna be your smallest material. So an 18 aught thread is gonna be smaller than a six aught thread, for example. The other type of sizing for threads is denier. The denier is gonna be the opposite where the smaller number is gonna be your smaller diameter thread and the larger number is gonna be your larger diameter thread. So a 70 denier thread is gonna be a smaller diameter than a 140 denier thread or a 210 denier thread, for example. If you're tying small bugs, typically you wanna tie with a smaller, smaller thread because then you have to be less worried about your thread wraps overall. There's little exceptions to that on either way, but as you're tying bigger bugs, typically you're gonna be using a bigger thread. From there, there's a world of stuff that you can experiment with. There's a handful of sort of core materials that you're gonna use over and over again. Peacock, partridge, pheasant tail, marabou, these are all things that you're gonna use in a lot of different style uh, patterns that exist out there. But again, focus on those recipes, keep it simple. For example, if you're gonna tie a hare's ear, really all you need for the hare's ear is your hook, your thread, and then you pick up a hare's mask. You can also do it with dubbing in place of the hare's mask, and then some pheasant tail. Then you can tie some hare's ears with just those two components in addition to the thread and the hooks. One of the nice things about fly tying is you can build on all of this stuff as well, right? You learn a base level pattern. You won't learn a woolly bugger. You learn a zebra midge. Uh, you learn the hare's ear, a pheasant tail, and then you can build on it. You can add a bead to it. If you need a pattern that has a little bit more weight, maybe you do brass or you do tungsten, you can add a bead to it. It'll elevate the fly. It'll give it a different presentation. Uh, maybe you change out, you add a little bit of flash to it. You incorporate flash into the fly somehow. Um, you can switch colors. You can do a lot of different things. Once you have that base and, and you have that experience tying a, a pattern from kind of that entry level starting point. Another thing to consider is uh, sort of glues and finishes and all of that kind of stuff. It's important to have something that's gonna help make your fly durable at the end of the day, especially as you're starting out, you're learning how to whip finish and all that kind of stuff. Zap a gap can be sort of a lifesaver at the bench. It's not to save a fly, it's to help make your fly more durable and longer lasting overall. You have more traditional, this is a water-based head cement. There's lacquers and things like that out there that you can use as well that are really hard and finish really good. They might take a little bit longer uh, to cure and whatnot. And if you don't quite have that patience, then UV is a great place to go. There's been a lot of great developments in UV finishes. You can use it in place of glue when you're using that clear in a lot of situations. And then there's also some new colored stuff that can make it really fun at the vise. Um, again, just to elevate a certain pattern. Maybe you're tying a pheasant tail and you've done a dozen of them, and now you wanna add a hot spot to it. You can come in with just some orange, orange UV, put a little dab on there, hit it with the UV light, which is key to using UV finishes. Um, and you got a pattern that's maybe a little bit different than what you've seen or what the fish have seen out there. Lots of different stuff, right, that goes into the whole game of fly tying. If you're fortunate enough and, and you have a space at home, maybe you can dedicate a desk or a corner of an office or if you have a whole room. But if you don't have that ability, if you don't have a ton of space, 
Um, then there's some great solutions from both Umqua, Fish Pond, and some other companies out there that make traveling kit bags. If you watched any of the fly tying videos we do, I use this one. It comes in partnership with this tool caddy that I have. We also have a full gear review over this one. This is the Umqua tire bag. So it's built to contain and organize all of your fly tying equipment, vice, tools, and materials included so that you have a nice clean package. Organization is key for me, fly tying. I never wanna sit down at the bench and have to think about where my materials are. I just wanna start tying. So if I know where everything is and I can find it right away, I know I'll be a lot more effective and it'll be a lot more enjoyable. So we also have the fish pond one here. It's a little bit bigger than the Umco one. So maybe a little bit more capacity to grow into. The Umco one does have modularity to it. You can add on to it. So it, it, it lends the growth as well. A lot of different things to think about, right? There's a lot of different tools, a lot of different materials. It can be very technical. It can be simplified. It's really how you want to approach um, fly tying and, and what you're looking to get out of it at the end of the day. This is too much and you don't want to deal with it, man. I, I don't want to have to think about the vice. I don't want to have to think about the tools. Just give me something and get going. Manufacturers have done a great job of helping to, um, you know, provide you with what they feel like is a great base level starting point. And we do have a few options at Avidmax. So this is the hairline tire kit. So this is their economy tools and vice kit. So it's a very base level starting kit that base level set of tools that we talked about a vice put it in this package and then they've gone through and they found uh, 20 fly patterns and that any trout fisher might want to start with good beginner patterns and giving you the materials that you need to tie um, a variety of, or a, a number of those flies you're not going to get the same amount of material that you will get if you're buying it individual packaging but it's a good place to start that gets you a nice variety wopsy has one here as well that ties a various number of patterns, very similar patterns. You can see those starting patterns a lot of times are, are very similar, but some good kit options and, and other ones available at Avamax as well. So I know there's a lot to it, right? And I hope it's not overly daunting. If you feel like you're, you're still not sure where to go from here, give us a call. We're always available over the phone, online and in store if you're local here. Uh, near Centennial, Colorado. Fly tying has been a great thing for me. It brings a lot of peace and tranquility into my life. Um, and if it's something that you're interested in, I would definitely recommend giving it a go. Another thing that we offer at Avamax is our weekly tying videos. So if you haven't seen Tying Tuesday, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Every week on Tuesdays, we publish a new fly tying tutorial so you can follow along and tie that fly. Again, thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and then check out everything that you see here at avidmax.com. Appreciate you watching and good luck out on the water.